Steve from uh, uh, he he's works at Newsday. He had a, a Reynolds Fellowship, and he developed a new tool uh, for newsrooms to use concerning uh, SEO and headlines called Yeseo. So he's going to talk about the tool he developed and how it can be used. Take thanks, Ryan. Thank you for having me, Gary uh, and Brant and everybody there. Uh, sorry, I can't join you in person. Um, you know, a little mix up here, but um, but thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's a little awkward because I see the empty podium. Um, but uh, but yeah, I uh, I'm Ryan Restivo, and you know I'm here to talk about, uh, like you said, my RJI fellowship project. So RJI through um, University of Missouri, right? Um, I was a fellow for 2022, so that spanned from uh, July of last year up until March uh, when this thing launched. Um, and it's called Yesio, like Gary said, and uh, the logo is actually made by a student at Mizzou uh, through RJI, because um, I'm not that graphically inclined. Um, but uh, but I had the opportunity to do this thanks to them. And um, I wanted to do this to use uh, what I've learned over the years to help more people. Um, that's what this has been about, right? Uh, building you know free, accessible, practical innovation and uh and seeing it help people all over all over so it's uh been a, an awesome opportunity and I'm, I'm glad to share it with you all um so like rji fellowship projects come with like a statement and uh and a lot of different stuff and pitching right um so the goal of mine was to create a slack bot that helps newsrooms with seo best practices um and the technical challenge for me was always um to make the scale to other folks right have other newsrooms be able to install um which is something i never tried before i made tools for one newsroom but now making new tools for more than one was the real challenge from my end um and you know now any newsroom with a slack a workspace can install this right um after the fellowship was over um actually worked to get it available in the slack app directory so that's like the uh, equivalent of like the app store i guess um in a certain sense um so like if you look for an outlook or dropbox or anything like that if you type yes um you would see something like that for seo um so this is eight month um, eight month fellowship process and it's been almost like what five six months since it's released um if i remember right or if i'm good at timing um and a lot has really happened in that time right so over 300 workspaces have installed it which i'm really proud of um you know, users have run stories in 34 different U.S. states, across the U.S. and Canada, um, and over 30 countries. Um, just sort of what I've seen in the data, right? Over 5,000 stories have been run uh, by over uh, 500 users. I just actually did that math over the last couple of days because I wanted to make sure I brought it out here. Um, and and that's kind of what it is. But um, I kind of what is it kind of what kind of kind of build, right? So um, so really the main focus for me. Was focusing on kind of the core principles that drove this and a lot of what i did was a lot of research interviews to start um and very early on i had somebody tell me um you know to talking about the focus on the headline right so the headline is the most important thing that a journalist has power over to make sure their work is read is uh, what he told me and it always stuck with me right and i keep saying it um because i because it stuck with me but like that part that talks about power right um when I think about tools I've built for newsrooms, right? I think about how we want to empower people to make better decisions. How do we give them more? Um, and how do we give them more? And how do we limit the time they need to kind of make that decision? Because we all know that a lot of people in newsrooms are doing many different jobs. So how can we lower lower that barrier to entry for one job so that it can free them to do parts of the other parts of their job that they're, they're trying to do? Um, so a lot of the research I did for SEO was really drawn from that kind of qualitative research, right? Um, listening to the problem, really digging into the problem space and uh, kind of understanding what and why and, and how a tool could help them. And like, um, and so every part of the experience tries to build off of that, reducing the time to come up with that relevant headline, diving into keywords using uh, natural language processing, which is like the thing before all the other AI was cool, right? Um, and kind of giving you insights to act on that you might not have otherwise thought of. And um, and then that GPT stuff comes up, right? Like three quarters of the way through an eight month project, what do you do? Um, so I had a good conversation with um, with the very smart developer, much smarter developer than me, as I was trying to figure out what to do. And um, he talked about how he was using it to teach himself Ruby. Um, and I realized that I was probably using it in the wrong way. So I thought about how can you kind of think through building a practical product um, for newsrooms and, and kind of giving that, and that's what I've kind of tried to do and try to build off an experiment on. So I talked about a lot of the research I'd done. Um, I have like seven of these different slides. I'm only gonna show a couple, um, but like, I feel like it was important to think about how do we get here, right? Like focus on the headline. These were all the ideas, I actually just dug these up this past week, thinking about like how 
not just like reflecting on what was in here, but also like how, um, you know, are there opportunities still here that maybe I haven't explored as much? Um, so a lot of the top is thinking about the top and the green is thinking about, okay, how do I think about this process? How do I think about the experience? And the bottom is like, this was the qualitative research from folks in the industry kind of thinking through and I took the names out. Um, so um, just trying to think of like, how can I kind of build and match to what people wanted to do or people wanted, people told me about the problem space, right? Digging into the problem. Um, so this is the first one, right? They're just kind of thinking about how do I do this, right? Um, the original idea to, for me came from somebody in my newsroom who talked about a story that um, that was that was like, she came to me and just like, why did we not rank on the first page of Google? So we dug into it, looked at a Google sheet and everything on that page and kind of figured out, hey, um, this home health care aid story, we didn't have all the important information that everybody else in our competitive New York market had. Um, so that was why we lost, right? So um, so then kind of spun that idea into how does this scale, right? How do we kind of do this for any story? Um, and then other ideas that I kind of thought through were like, okay, can we audit this page, right? So now I'm trying to think a lot more with having those 5,000 stories and having certain amounts of certain things, right? Could we take some of that data and try to say like, okay, well, your headline should be around X characters long because we know that from the data in the past when we've calculated a headline, we know that all of these headlines have heard it eventually through this data. Um, you kind of give people that insight. So trying to think through some of these ideas and some of them are still trying to act on, right? Um, and kind of think through, right? There's stuff about lighthouse scores and page speed, which I care about, which I haven't been able to really activate yet. Um, and then kind of just thinking about keywords, right? So keywords and um, was one of the things I always tried to think through and it came through in a lot of the research interviews too. Um, thinking about like these, you know, trying to think through following what people say, but how to connect those key parts of the story to the parts that um, that are kind of in the story to other data that we can help uh, move them along their way, right? So, um, so yeah, so all this is kind of just setting up, oh, what does the story look like, right? Um, so story in SEO looks like this, um, kind of views like these. Um, this idea actually probably came around a year ago, I want to say. I was talking with Rochelle Gordon out at uh, Northwestern, right? And uh, Rochelle's like, um, you know, I forgot her, her entire part of the conversation, but at, at some point it was just like, well, how can we prove that everything we're talking about in the story is actually in, like, are those keywords are actually in the story? Um, and I remember that night being like, okay, I can do this. Like I could spin this up right away. I have all this data. So kind of taking those keywords, right. in this view, it's kind of looking at like what's on the page. Um, I think this is a Tampa Bay time story, if I want to say, right. Um, how do I know that what I'm reflecting on the page to users is actually in my story, right. So trying to count how many times these are being used. And then if they're being reflected in the headline or the possible description that you would see, um, you know, breaking down how often you're using those most prominent keywords and kind of proving, right, how strongly or loosely related they are to your existing headline. Um, you know, pulling the main keywords out and spinning up Google Trend data for you to act on um, is that explore keywords button. Um, and then um, and then the GPT option, right, suggesting headlines, making it as easy as clicking a button, making it so that, you know, lowering that barrier to entry for folks that they can just click the button, learn something quickly, figure out what they want to and kind of get there, right? Um, and every time I showed people this idea, they were like, wow, this is great. Um, but what about stories that are not yet published, right? Like, how do we, we, how do we kind of do that? Right. You can't do that for just this kind of one link. Um, so then I came up with in December kind of working through that. Um, and this was kind of the second command, which is, um, just inputting text, right. Being agnostic to any CMS, um, making it as easy as copy and paste, right. So anybody can copy and paste their story in there. Um, and then what you kind of get as the, the thing has kind of evolved, um, this is a more evolved version of it, um, but kind of learning about your story, right? So trying to take that data, I'm kind of inferring based on what keywords are in your story, I could say, okay, well, this story from last weekend is about the conflict in Israel, right? Um, I've already pulled this data from you for the user and kind of other ways for you to think about your story. What are those? I'm not looking at all the slides right now. I'm looking at my kind of text, but the related queries, right? What are the things that are... Um, or the strongest related queries to that. What are things that are popping up in the US at this time related to this keyword? And then what are those kind of queries people are doing a lot of and what's their volume, right? Can I give that to you in real time so you can think about your story in a different way? Um, and then underneath that is kind of this other part of it too, right? So um, all those prominent keywords we just saw and then kind of seeing from the data, like I said before, right? We could say, okay, the average headline is about 66 characters and description runs about 128. 
And then we can dig into our keywords further. We could share the report to somebody else that actually came through testing um, through the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, when they initially tested, they're like, this is great, but how do I share this from one person to the next? So we had to invent a way to do that. Um, and then also using the GPT uh, language model to kind of make some friendly headlines for your story. And um, and I, I remember, um, I wanna say it was like, there's a little lightning bolt there I put just recently. Um, but people love clicking that button at ONA. I know that in the night lounge, um, when uh, Jonathan Soma had his uh, talk on the Saturday, right? He's like, who wants headline ideas? And I had to raise my hand and talk about how people love this stuff. Um, and I love it because um, it's just simple, like clicking a button, getting those ideas. Um, my goal was to build this kind of practical product for newsrooms um, and kind of think about like from my experience, right? I know that even somebody in uh, British Columbia told me a few months ago, right? Technology and news will, newsrooms equals fear for a lot of people. So, um, so I know it could be difficult to introduce new things. So how do we lower that barrier? How do we make it easy? So um, my process is to kind of think of it and use it as an assistant, um, kind of like a check on your own tuition. And I've heard from newsrooms across the country, right? They'll say, okay, there's a good idea. And one of these is a good idea in another. Well, I could take these two and kind of make it into something that is mine. Um, and they're not like, they're not perfect, right? They're trying to be imperfect. So, um, so there are ideas that you can kind of take and kind of mold into just like the data that you're getting you know, you'll take that and you'll be able to get ideas from that. Um, you know, what I've been able to build, I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to kind of learn and evolve it, right? One of the main ways is to ask users questions um, like this um, when they click. So um, so about a couple seconds after they get these suggestions, trying to create a feedback loop um, to make improvements in the product. And um, that's led, driven to a lot of experimentation and growth. And earlier this spring, Worked with um, Nick Diakopoulos out at uh, Northwestern as part of his generative AI in the newsroom challenge. And um, his first question to me was, how do you directly message a user, which I didn't actually have an answer to. Um, so then I had to build that. Um, but then the second part of it was, how do we um, work on a test, right? Because GPT-4 costs 15 times as much then, right? Did it actually give people better options? So the initial way I um, created this test was kind of like this framework. A user hits that button and then they're kind of A-B tested, right? They're sent from one or the other and then they're getting suggested headlines. And um, and then I kind of reported that out through the generative AI in the newsroom challenge um, in that article. And then these were kind of the initial results of that. Um, so they were about even. And then I kind of read the feedback in the forums and um, since somebody can step through, they could give yes or no. And then they could also say, okay, why did this not work or why did it work for me? Um, so I was able to kind of see, like some people said, okay, this doesn't seem like it's a good style or this is wrong in AP style. So I made a very tiny tweak that was, um, you know, seeing, adding to the prompt, what about it? What about it knows about AP style? Um, and then you could see that it jumped. Um, I want to say at least 10 points on each one. I'm kind of small, the scanning of the numbers right now. Um, but I was able to share this on uh, IJNet, the International Journalist Network back in July. Um, I shared out this data. And so now I've been iterating and kind of building a couple more tests on top of this and, um, and trying other things to even build on that as long as I am having happy users in there. Um, so it, it's been great, right? I said over 300 workspaces have installed it and it's as easy as uh, going to yesio.app or and hitting add to Slack or going to the app store, the, the app uh, Slack app directory. Um, you know, one of the, I'll be, admit one of the biggest weaknesses I have is that as it, since it's so easy to click to download, I actually don't know who's using it at certain points, right? I need to kind of acquire their emails after, which is not the ideal way to build a product, but, um, but it's actually been great because um, I've been able to slowly learn their stories. And um, a lot of this changed since March since I released it and still learning about the users. Um, one of the first events I did after the fellowship was over was um, through the Illinois News Broadcasters Association Spring Convention, um, where I also presented virtually back in April. And um, and I finished the presentation and, um, and Jenna Dooley here uh, gets up on the microphone and says, oh, basically the story, like we use SEO in our newsroom and we were able to see this great improvement. We saw a story that is one of the best stories we've had in a year. And I felt like I would need to leap through the camera to kind of talk to her and, and get that story out there. Um, so slowly got, and then I obviously talked to her after, got this down a little bit further um, and, and kind of continue to learn from, from a lot of different users. And to me, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day is, um, you know, I'm just super appreciative that people have found it and been able to get value out of it. And, and people that I otherwise 
would never have met have been able to use this and be able to get more information to improve their workflows and work on their stories. That's what I care about. Um, so, so it really is, you know, super gratifying to me. Um, so, you know, I, and, um, yeah, I slowing down a little bit. Um, but, um, I have probably buried the lead, right? Absolutely free. They mentioned that about RGI and, you know, free practical innovation. Um, you know, that not only is the logo from uh, RGI student and Mizzou, the, the, uh, the QR code there is from, a from, a students from the, the J school working in a strategic communications class that I got to work with, uh, to get this off the ground. So, um, I encourage you all to try it, um, our current friends to try it and hopefully they could see value from it and, uh, and use it, like it, and then I can start to learn about them and how, um, how I can help them moving forward and, uh, and continue to join this uh, this adventure. So I'm I'm super happy to be able to present to you all. And um, and yeah, that's kind of all I have right now. I'm happy to take any questions you guys have. This is just a comment because I started playing with it in Slack while you were talking, and it's awesome. It I really <laughs> like, especially the just. There was like SEO description ideas, and I was like, oh, this is, this is perfect. This is what I needed. Because I hate doing headlines, and I hate doing descriptions, and this is great. <laughs> Ryan, we had uh, a talk earlier this morning um, from uh, Zach Wade at CNN, and he was talking about performance metrics. And CNN has lots of wonderful tools for performance metrics. And you know they're using them uh, obviously in the same way you're suggesting here, uh, but for you know those nonprofit newsrooms of three or four people, or or uh, rural newsrooms, or you know, or, or as you're saying, I see what you said, Philadelphia and Tampa were were using this. Uh, obviously, this is giving you know more people more more tools for you know analyzing performance and getting more people engaged in your stories. Yeah, and I'm happy to share. So, um, so yeah, I want to say um, there was great. Like I said, people that I may never meet the impact on. I mentioned um, there's a there's a newsroom out in British Columbia that supports like 40 different newspapers. They're very small newsrooms, um, and they started using it. And I had a conversation with them. I did a, a presentation with them. They're like, "Oh, you're welcome in British Columbia anytime. Come on, right?" Um, and you know, they've all been able to use it and get a lot of great value out of it. Um, through the local media association and the Oklahoma Media Center, I've been able to I get a lot of folks um, in the state of Oklahoma that use it as well. Um, one person talked to me; he's also a Ryan. Um, he told me, you know, they had never used Slack before, but that he just made a Slack workspace just to install SEO into their workspace, and now they love using it. Right, and um, we were at ONA. Um, I was at ONA back in August, and I was actually just sending him an email like, "Hey, I wanted to ask if I could use some audio you said from a from a meeting to like endorse it." and um, that that night he's like, oh, by the way, I just put something on social media about this, like that we use this and we use AI in our newsroom. It's a little tool called YesEO. He says it better than I do. Um, but, um, but I was like, I was like, wow, like, and we didn't coordinate that at all. Um, but it's just really super to me that like, you know, like I said, like there are, there are places like that are larger newsrooms that have used it and have tried it and a lot of, and all the things like that too. Um, but like you said, um, and like what aligns to RJI's goals, right? Local, small local newsrooms. Um, it's it's been really it's been really awesome to see like a lot of different newsrooms using this and and getting value out of it. Do you want to remind us one more time where to to uh, grab it and download it? Yeah. So that QR code um, should take you to yesio.app. Um, yesio.app is where you'd find it. Um, that's the the website that we have. And um, it's available in the Slack app directory. So if you're if you have your Slack workspace, um, you could look it up there as well. It's as easy as typing yes in there. I feel like I'm plugging something too hard, but um, but again, free, right? Um, and and yeah, I, that's my email right there, Ryan at yesio.app. It's all me. So um, when things go wrong, you can let me know. Um, but also, I hope that everybody uh, gets a chance to try it and um, hopefully get value out of it because that's that's what I'm here for at the end of the day. And, and just a quick backstory. R Ryan is like one of the success stories of this conference. You attended. You first attended what four or five years ago? Was it? So it was, yeah. So it was um, here in so Illinois. 
kind of where you were sitting, a little further back. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, cause I could kind of see through the the thing, right? So yeah, back in 2019, um, I got a um, I know a lot of folks might not know, might probably know, right? Through Open News, they do like kind of scholarships to attend conferences. So, um, so I got a scholarship to attend this one. Um, I was able to fly in very quickly through uh, Chicago, right? Drive down um, to university and. Um, yeah, I learned a ton in that conference and um, it really opened me to a lot of different things, met a lot of great folks too. Um, and also just opened me to a lot of different ideas in terms of like how I could, you know, work with folks and get some things done. I've had some ideas that didn't work um, as always, but, um, but eventually land on a one that did, which I'm showing off now. Um, but, you know, it, it led me, right? It also puts that core belief, right? Working with students is very important to me. I've worked with students through RGI, I'm able to work with, um, even working with some students now at the university a little bit. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's led me to really think about like, um, you know, how I want to get these things done. I've, you know, there's been folks I've talked to from other universities as well. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that like, you know, this conference has helped me kind of think about my core values and, um, and obviously working through RTI and everything else that it's helped me think about like how to continue to serve folks and how to use my skills to build something that will, that will help more than just uh, one newsroom, which is really the goal uh, for me at the end of the day, which is, which is why hopefully, uh, hopefully I put on a good show for you all. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. We appreciate it. Thanks for uh, zooming in and making the time and, and uh, uh, joining us here. Thank you so much.